First time at Cool 98 Studios, I want to welcome comedian and friend James Mullinger. How are you doing today, James? I'm great, Joelle, because I'm here with you. Oh, my. That's, that's why I love you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You are, you've are you been so busy lately. What's been going on? Um, Lots. I've been filming a, a sitcom for the Trailer Park Boys streaming network. I've been on the road a lot. Um, there's been so much stuff writing a second book. But you know what? It's nice to take some time and just hang out with a friend. Here we are in the studio just having a good time. This is beautiful. Absolutely. And I always love seeing you. Likewise. And I always love hearing you and watching you. And you are going to be somewhere where it's a, such a perfect stage. The atmosphere is amazing. So tell people where you're going to be coming up this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I am so excited about this. And it, it's true. To, to your point, it's one of the most beautiful performing mm -hmm. arts venues anywhere in Canada. The, the Kingsbury Garden Amphitheatre, which if no one's been, I mean, it is absolutely mind blowing. Lucinda Flamer, who owns Kingsbury Garden and founded it, uh, built this amphitheatre that can, that can seat kind of upwards of 2000 people in a town with a population of less than that. <laughs> right. I mean, there's not many places in the world where you have a venue for performing arts that is bigger than the town itself but people flock from all over like these these shows we do at the, at the amphitheatre we have people coming from England people coming from the states from mm -hmm. across Canada and uh, and this is the second annual St. Andrew's Comedy Festival so on Friday night the 13th of September uh, Jeff Irwin and Jimmy Flynn two you know New Brunswick comedy legends uh, performing on stage together and then Saturday night it's myself and Ron James and Ron wow. James I mean without question yeah. one of the Canada's greatest ever comedians of course a proud maritimer um ron and i have been friends like we've kind of you know friends online for a number of years mm -hmm. a mutual respect connecting but funnily enough uh, this past weekend was the first time we met and performed together oh, no for way. the first time yeah we did a show in halifax opening for our friend uh, sean collins who was filming a stand-up special we jumped on the show so ron and i got to finally bond and meet ahead of the big show this saturday night uh 10 years i've been living here uh, 20 years i've been a fan of ron james and finally first time together in New Brunswick on stage together this weekend St. Andrew's Comedy Festival it's going to be absolutely incredible outdoors glorious weather and I'm saying that because it will be because yes, uh, the, yes, the right. gods are listening <laughs> and um yeah, there's really nothing quite like an experience there. I mean, I've seen all kinds of shows there. I've seen, you know, I've seen Jimmy Rankin there on, on Canada Day, uh, Sistema New Brunswick on stage there with the author Dan Brown. Um, it, it's just, it's a magical, magical place. Lucinda Flamer and all of the people at the Kingsbury Garden uh, are just amazing. Mayor Brad Henderson, who uh, uh, heads up the Kingsbury Garden, you know, he is always on hand doing everything Chelsea. Bellier, of course, uh, Chef Alex Hahn, one of the world's greatest chefs is there. So arrive early at the Kingsbury Garden. Have one of the best best ever lobster rolls that you will ever have anywhere in the world and if you are allergic to gluten I will point out that he does do an amazing gluten free lobster oh, roll wow, um, okay. so really I mean I, I, you know, I, I love St Andrews so much just as a place and the Kingsbury Garden is, is a magical place and so to be there enjoy stand up comedy uh, comedy festival you know f four performers who I mean the other three are icons I'm just you know I'm just lucky to be involved uh, oh, th on. three icons <laughs> and one lucky chancer uh, from the UK it's going to be lovely I mean you just mentioned you had you've been friends with Ron James but you mm -hmm. just met him mm -hmm. what is it about his comedy that you love um it's interesting I guess what he does is what I try to do which is that he, his his his, all his whole act is about the Canadian experience and specifically you know the the small town Canadian experience and it's that thing it's the idiosyncrasies it's the it's the charm um, and what what I again I guess what, what I try and do is I try and I try and model what I do on what he does which is you know talking about places that maybe shining a light on regions of Canada that often don't get talked about right. um, and 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 poking fun in a in a respectful way like you know I mean I, I make jokes about you know where we live mm -hmm. um, but it's always done with it with just a huge amount of love and what I love about Ron is is that you know my knowledge might be somewhat limited to you know New Brunswick and the Maritimes area Ron because he's been performing and headlining and selling out theatres across Canada for more than 25 years he knows every single town and city across Canada I believe there's 8,000 towns and cities across <laughs> Canada I bet Ron has performed in all of them so you can name a place yeah. and he will have an amazing story about it and I went to see him actually at the uh, Imperial Theatre here in St. John last November and it was just the most incredible show. He comes on stage, does two hours, just absolutely rips the roof off. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so so to me, it's 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 someone that's able to kind of you know poke fun at the at the place that we live, at the country we live, but do it in this way that is just so infused with love mm -hmm. um, and and respect for the place. And and he understands. No one understands Canada uh, through through the comedic lens better than Ron James. 
Well, I think that's why people love you as well, James, is because you come over here and you came over here and you noticed the unnoticeable to people that see it every day. Well, that's and you, kind. you pointed out and you're, you really notice those things and people are like, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's hilarious. And people love that about you. So for your for your set coming up this weekend, are we going to hear some some uh, greatest hits kind of of James <laughs> Mullinger and some new material or what do you have lined up? Yeah, us? it will definitely be a, be a mix. I mean, one of the things I love to do in St. Andrews is always write brand new stuff about things that has happened that week. So this is actually, I believe it's my sixth or seventh, maybe eighth time performing in this gorgeous amphitheater. Did my first show there in 2019, which at the time was the, uh, it was the biggest ever outdoor music and comedy festival in Atlantic Canadian history. It was something like, you know, we have like 1,500, 2,000 people out there absolutely magical and then it was one of the few venues that was able to keep operating during covid so the following year there was like 20 people distanced and it was live streamed oh, uh, nice. across you know all of uh, all of charlotte county and so so in subsequent years obviously the numbers have gone up again last year i was there with steve patterson and and every time what i do to be honest what i do is i i, I tap up brad henderson i tap up vicky hogarth I, I get hold of my friends in saint andrews the saint andrews royalty and they <laughs> tell me the gossip as to what's been going on and i nothing i love more than i basically some of the times I'm, I'm honing these bits right up until I walk out on stage and I walk out and I love looking out at a thousand people and I, I, I do a joke and I see them all go how does he know this yeah, right. and, 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 sure. and so yeah I get that intel but then I'm also getting messages from people saying you know oh it's our first time coming to see you so it's always an interesting thing I try and make it so that no two shows I do are ever the same I'm always writing new stuff trying to write things that have happened that day specific to the place I'm in um, but then I'm also aware of the fact that there are people coming who've, who've never seen me before before, who, who might want to hear for the first time a joke about where things used to be. Right. Oh, which incidentally, um, this morning uh, I was dropping off some props. There's a, there's a film production happening here in St. John. Uh, a, a huge uh, series, American TV series, Revival is filming, I believe being filmed just down the road from here. And I was asked to drop off some props. They needed some magazines mm -hmm. uh, to be used in a scene. And uh, Matt Keenan, the, the props manager, uh, asked me to drop off the magazines uh, at, at Prince Edward Mall. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, could you bring it to the building? Building where Nordia, the, the, the old Nordia building. So I had to walk into Prince Edward Mall this morning and walk up to people and say, excuse me, do you know where Nordia used to be? And, 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 and everyone just kind of laughed or like looked around like looking for hidden cameras. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 I'm, this isn't a skit. I, really I actually need to know where Nordia used to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm always trying to do that thing of, you know, a lot of that material, like I retired that joke for many, many years. Like I, I, I did that joke to death five years ago, stopped doing it. And then suddenly now, thanks to the fact that we do have so many newcomers moving to, to St. John yeah. uh, falling in love with this region I'm finding that a lot of audiences now are people that are coming that have never seen me before never seen any of my stuff mm -hmm. so uh, I kind of dust off old stuff try and rework it try and make it fresh again but uh, but equally yes there will be a lot of uh, so it'll be 50-50 50-50 greatest hits reworked remixed yeah. and brand new stuff uh, honed over the last couple of weeks and it's 20 years 20 years James that's yes. crazy I know I know 20 years been a comedian and now um, and this was what was so nice this past weekend doing the show with Ron James and, and, and Sean Collins was that Sean Collins there's a story in my book about the fact that about a few months into starting out in stand up I was booed off stage at the comedy store in London and, and, and I hadn't seen my wife in months I've been off doing stand up and I finally got the coveted open spot at the comedy store I said come and see how, how much it was worth it that we I've been on the road for all this time come and see me see how much I've improved and she comes and after six minutes 400 people boo me off stage oh. And as I'm walking out, I, I go to her and say, we, we, we should go. And she says, yeah, do you, do you mind if we leave separately? Can you go oh. first? Right. And, and as I'm leaving... Sean Collins is on stage tearing the roof off. Canadian comedian, been in England for 25 years, one of the most loved comedians. And so there is nothing more kind of satisfying exercising that demon of 20 years ago uh, being booed off stage while Sean Collins rips the roof off uh, to now being able to do a show with him and, uh, and, do, and do okay. I, I, I mean, it's not my place to say that I did great. I mean, some <laughs> might say that's not my place. But so it's nice that you're 20 years later, you can finally say, okay, uh, that demon has finally been exercised. Well, I can can say I love watching you I love your bits uh -huh. I love everything that you do on stage and I'm also wondering 
uh, what stage is uh, on your bucket list? Do you have some stages that you just you would love to be on? That's an excellent question. Um, I always love doing th things that, that are different and fresh. I love, you know, for example, doing the, the, the shows over on the on the peninsula, outdoors in, right, in yeah. vineyards and, and cideries, amphitheaters. I mean, place-wise, there's one place that I, I really want to perform, which is Vancouver Island, and mainly because I have to say that it's the one place that I get the most messages from. People saying, uh, will you come and do a show here? And that doesn't happen often for someone like at the bottom of the comedy ladder like myself, but Vancouver Island is the one place. I think because there's lots of Brits there, there's also lots of maritime timers there but um but to be honest and i am working on this my big dream is to do a show on gramanan um <laughs> it's the one one of the really? few places Graminan? yeah it's the beautiful. one of the beautiful place never yeah. been one of the few places in new brunswick that I've, i haven't performed in i've um, been lucky enough to perform in so many beautiful uh, places in this province but it's the one place i haven't been but uh, myself and a wonderful local comedian are working on uh, making that happen for next summer so wow. w when my gramanan dream comes true i can finally i can yes. finally i can die happy knowing that i ticked it off the bucket list listen i'm going if you go to Graminan, it, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful there, so i I get it. Thank you. Now, are there any, I was talking about superstitions earlier mm -hmm. today. Are there any superstitions or anything before you get on stage that you have to do or anything you have to work out? Because I don't know, for me, I would think you still get probably a little jitters when you go on stage, totally. even though you've done it so many times. Yeah. There's always maybe that little trepidation uh, sometimes. But are, is there any superstitions or anything you have before you get up there? Yeah, it's an excellent question. Yeah, and I do big time. And I still get very nervous. I mean, in some ways, I was talking to a comedian about this recently, amazing Jen Grant, who amazing comedian who actually recently has moved to the Shediac area. Always nice to have comedians yeah. gravitating towards New Brunswick. Um, and she was saying, I was saying to her how it's weird that 20 years in, I'm film, I'm feeling like more nervous now than I was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And she was saying that that's a, a good sign because it's, it, it, those are the, the levels. It's like it means more now. Right. And it means you've kind of stepped up cre creatively. And I think the thing is, it, is it just means so, the, the job means so much to me. And I take the responsibility so seriously of wanting to entertain. Uh, I know how hard it is to get out of the house. I know how hard it is to get to get babysitters. I know, you know, the cost of living has gone up. Mm. You know, disposable income is, is at an all time low. So for people to come out, I, I take that responsibility very seriously. So I'm, I am backstage uh, fretting, stressing. Um, and to answer your question about superstitions, I mean, I do have ridiculous things like certain socks are lucky because because I had a barnstorming gig when I was wearing these socks. Mm -hmm. Certain suit jackets are unlucky because I had a bad gig in them. But really, I think a, a big part of it is I have, um, from my childhood and possibly from, from growing up kind of you know, with ADHD and not, not knowing about it until being diagnosed last year and being bullied and stuff at school, like I have a lot of like, like facial and uh, vocal tics, mm -hmm. which, uh, so essentially before I walk out on stage, I try and get them all out mm -hmm. because like I can do, I can like sit here and talk to you and kind of not do them and I can not do them on stage. But when I'm sitting at my desk, I kind of look like I'm, I'm a jittering kind of, so mm -hmm. right before I walk out, I try and get like an hour's worth of facial tics out. So basically, if you come into my dressing room before a show, you might think I'm having a seizure. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and it's just weird little things like fiddling with um, uh, uh, water bottle tops. I drink gallons of water before I go out because I always think, oh, my, my mouth's going to go dry. And it, and it never does. But then, of course, you need to go to the washroom. So it's this endless cycle. of. Right. I, I think on, on Saturday night before, before uh, Sean Collins is set, I must have uh, been to the washroom about 15 times. I mean, and it's weird because some days I, I don't know it's bad and the doctor's going to tell me off for this. But some days I kind of forget to drink any water. Yeah. And on the show day. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, so the superstitions really are just, just nerves and just always. Um, and I guess part of it also is that I now know that I, I'm channeling that, that that anxiety into what will hopefully be a, a good show, and right. I feel like I, I feel like if I wasn't nervous, that would worry me more. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah, it's um, but yeah, really show day. I, I'm not one of these people that kind of it comes naturally to where I can just kind of sit around all day and not think about it and then just show up. Like yeah. on a show day, it's kind of why people always say, oh, well, does your wife come on the road with you? And it's like, no, 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 because I am not fun <laughs> to be with on the day of, yeah. uh, I'm pacing and I'm fretting. But, yeah. uh, but you know, it, when it pays off uh, on, on stage in the evening, that, that makes it all worth it. Now, do you have a memory that stands out with, I mean, you've had 20 years, so you have mm. a lot of memories, but is there any uh, memory that stands out about you on stage uh, that is like, wow, I can't believe that happened? Nice, yeah, it's a lovely question. I mean, I mean, certainly playing the amphitheater for, for the first time, like coming out on stage and seeing like, you know, like almost 2,000 people, seeing Mrs. Lucinda Flame in the front row, not knowing how, how that gig was going to go. Um, that was, I mean, I would, and I would say almost all of them would have to be, you know, here in St. John. I mean, 
one highlight was definitely doing the Hammersmith Apollo in in London with like Russell Peters and Catherine Ryan. And I did that pretty much a few days before we moved here. So it was nice to leave London on this huge high, doing this big show in this venue that everyone from the Rolling Stones and the Beatles had played. But then to leave all that behind and then and then move to St. John a couple of days later. But then almost instantly the dreams started coming true here. I mean, playing the Imperial Theatre for the first time just six months after moving here and discovering that, that, that I'd moved to this magical place where everyone told me I'd have to give up comedy if I wanted to live here. And then I move here and start doing tiny gigs in the R bar and in, in vineyards on the peninsula to 20 people. And that St. John's are so kind as to, that the word of mouth just spread quick enough that between uh, March and October, I'm able to get kind of 800 people come out and see a show because St. John's are kind enough to go, hey, there's this crazy Brit that's just moved here. Um, um, let's give him, <laughs> but I'd say the all time highlight would, would have to be uh, playing Harbour Station for, for the first time, uh, now obviously TD Station. And, um, and that again was all down to St. John's. It was people getting behind um, you, you know, th th this crazy Englishman that's, that's, that's come to their city and, and people being kind enough to, to come out and just, just get behind wanting to, to, to you know, it was a make a wish moment for me. And I would say that, that show, uh, 28th of April, uh, 2016, I, I, yeah, I, I think that will probably be uh, forever like a, a memory that I would say would be the, the, the career, career highlight. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Love that. Okay, so for there are some tickets still available. So to yes. those people who are last minute Lucy's, yes. we know St. Johners, last minute Lucy's, uh, what can people expect uh, from the whole night? I nice. mean, we want people to get those tickets soon uh, so they can be sold out and see you. So uh, wh what is your message to the people? Good question. I, I guess my message is, is, is this experience. And if you if you speak to anyone that has been to one of these events at the Kingsborough Amphitheatre, they will tell you that it is, is unlike anything else. Um, and if you want to see what it looks like, go to my YouTube channel. There are tons of videos of me on stage at the Kingsbury Amphitheatre. Beautiful drone footage that Tyler Warren Ellis has shot of, you know, thousands of people outside watching the comedy shows. It, it, it's a magical, transformative experience. And, and come for the weekend. You know, it's Friday night, Jeff Irwin and Jimmy Flynn. Jimmy Flynn, one of the greatest, you know, comedians Canada has ever produced from right here in New Brunswick. When I first met my, my, my girlfriend, now wife and, and father-in-law uh, 24 years ago, we bonded over a love of Jimmy Flynn oh, and nice. and one of the first Christmas presents he ever got me he drove to Sussex to Jimmy Flynn's house where he bought a VHS tape of Jimmy Flynn and wrote uh, and Jimmy Flynn signed it to James from Jimmy Flynn this was five oh. years before I came a comedian Wow. And, and I finally got to see Jimmy Flynn live many years later, right next door at Punchlines Comedy Club and uh, an amazing thing. So and again, finally, to you know, again, just I mean, um, we're on different nights, but this weekend yeah. to be sharing a stage with Jimmy Flynn's a dream. And then, you know, so come for come for two nights or come for one. But yeah, the, the fact that you can see Jimmy Flynn, Jeff Owen on the Friday, me and Ron James on the Saturday night. And everyone knows and loves St. Andrews. And just mm -hmm. for people to be able to come, have dinner at the, at the gorgeous Gard Garden Cafe, enjoy the uh, culinary delights of, of Chef Alex Hahn. And it, it's, it's just going to be such a, a, a magical experience for the whole family. And I really hope that people uh, come out and, uh, and share that experience with us. Because, and it's great that it's happening now, because normally it's in the thick of summer, mm -hmm. um, when it can sometimes be too hot. And, and we've got this glorious September weather. It's going to be a dream. But it still works in rain. It still goes ahead and there is a rain <laughs> date, but it still works no matter what the weather's like but um yeah if people are having trouble picturing it yeah do go online google kings bay Am amphitheatre and uh, and see and you'll be blown away it is it is gorgeous Stunning. a gorgeous spot to sit and just enjoy and laugh yes. your buns right <laughs> off that's exactly it it's <laughs> baby the kids are back in school it's time we all deserve a yeah. treat uh come and have a laugh with us and um and as ever i'll, I'll be around before or after the show so so please come and say hi i'll be in the audience watching ron um i'll sit at the back and uh, and yeah, let's all let's all have a party. Let's just have a good time. Are you gonna heckle him? Oh, never, <laughs> never. If there's one thing I know, it, it ne never heckle the person that's holding the microphone. All right, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, James. We love you. Thank you so much for doing everything you do in St. John and beyond our region, and really uh, putting us on the map. Oh, no. And. Uh, we're lucky to have you, and well, I hope you realize that uh, you are one of the best. Oh, well, right up there with Ron James. Oh, so. that's very kind of you. Well, the feeling's <laughs> mutual. I love you so much. And like I say, it's been so nice. Hearing. My kids and me, my kids were listening to you over the weekend, and they were just so happy to hear the hear the uh, the ads going out for the for, for for this event. And it's just you know, it's, it's always um, it's always an honor to see you. Um, and as I say, you are in my ears every day. Uh, but it's nice to have you face to face in front of me right now. I love it, and I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much, James. Saint Andrews. Comedy Fest coming up this weekend on Cool 98.